It's been interesting returning to Ararat, the town of my youth, and seeing how it's changed. Ararat went from being a government town with virtually no unemployment to a town where its people had to make their own opportunities. And I think when you live in the bush, you have to be willing to do this, to seize every opportunity. I'd previously worked in video production. There wasn't much call for that out here, so I've had a go at everything, from rouseabouting, web design, disability support work, I've even tried selling Christmas trees. And that's one thing country folk are good at doing, making the most of any situation. Cousins, Simon and Ben Green, both farmers, are a great example of this. They made a business out of collecting dead lambs of local farms and preparing their skins for products such as gloves and kiddies' toys. There's around a uh, 25% lambing loss in merino sheep. The factors to that are the weather, is the main one. Um, and then there's just natural culling at birth. Um, so yeah, we're just using a you know, byproduct of the merino industry uh, to, to value add to the dead stock there. Any dead stock on the farm isn't, isn't worth a cent to you. And, and uh, after hearing about the concept, we, th we thought it was a good opportunity to investigate. So <clears throat> it was just a matter of us making a few inquiries and contacts um, before finding out that, that we had a, a good little market to, to, um, to grab. The business is a win-win situation for all involved. The farmers get paid for each lamb collected and the boys employ up to seven local people, including skinners, salters and truck drivers. Peter Carthew has also made a comeback, rebuilding AME systems from the ashes of Packard CTA. I spoke with Peter's son, Christian. In 92, the Americans uh, left, uh, chasing their own strategies, and uh, uh, Packard CDA closed down. Peter grabbed 26 of his best people and started again. First year, they turned over probably just under $2 million, and from 2000 to 2004, it's just skyrocketed, uh, going, well, last financial year, to uh, $27.5 million. So from 26 key people to 270 people. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that, that's, that's pretty damn good figures. AME Systems has managed to survive by finding a niche market, supplying electrical harnesses to the Australian truck industry. We're a harsh country and um, the imports don't live up to it. We, they want Aussie tough trucks and um, we're proud to be providing Aussie tough harnesses built in our act for um, a huge number of trucks. Farming is a tough game. Shelley and Alan Green were running an unsustainable sheep property. They took a risk by diversifying into free range eggs. That risk is now paying off. So we had uh, a traditional farm here and both working off farm we wanted to work on farm. So we looked, at, we looked around for a business that would suit us um, to set up here and make this property viable so we could both be doing that at home. So we looked around and we decided to that free range eggs would suit our suit us and so now we have uh, 9,000 birds and we're about to build more sheds and double that production in the next 12 months. The Greens are also members of Grampians Produce, a group of innovative farmers who both market their own produce and promote the region as a whole. The ancient Phoenicians believed that the locations of towns were chosen by the gods and because of this towns never die. This town will never die, it will change and its fortunes will go up and down like the ebb and flow of the seasons, but it will never die. It will continue on, on the ingenuity of its people. In order to survive, the people of Ararat have had to work together as a community and adapt to the ever-changing economic landscape. Ararat is a great example to other country towns how despite the ups and downs of its history has managed to always find new ways to continue on and hold its place in greater society.